Hello, welcome to the industrial session also from our side and thank you all for joining us today. In this presentation I would like to show and present to you a brief overview of what we do at Nanographics. So one of our core topics is to improve the way we can create and show visual stories in the area of life science. So we believe that visualization and interactivity are the two key elements for making complex topics understandable to a wider audience. The coronavirus is probably the most prominent story that has shaped our life and this conference even for more than a year now. Earlier this year we have started to collaborate with several universities to create the first authentic 3D images of the coronavirus. Our basic idea was not to show only a model but actually to visualize the virus directly and immediately from electron microscopy data. So at Nanographics we actively participate in research projects and we try to transform the latest techniques or research into industrial applications where we work in various areas of scientific visualization. We always have a strong focus on biology. So over the course of the last couple of years I would say we have developed a framework that enables us to produce high quality scientific animations but also interactive applications. And in the development, we always have a strong focus on real-time computing and visual design. One integral part of our framework is an engine for modeling and rendering molecular data. So for instance, we are able to directly take shape information from microscopy and combine it with experimental results from structural biology. And when we do this, we can assemble and visualize pretty much comprehensive 3D models of viruses and cells. In biology, we currently experience a new wealth of information. So we have new findings coming in pretty much every day. And it's important for our biological modeling and visualization system to quickly adapt to any new changes and incorporate them. So in our framework, we make heavy use of procedural modeling approaches and we generate with this pretty much all biological worlds. So for instance, once we have a genetic code of a virus, we can directly produce the structure of the RNA. Or once we have the shape of the membrane, we can fill it directly with lipid proteins. And we heavily utilize parallel processing to make this interactive and pretty much instant. Understanding biology is important for understanding our own bodies, our health, and the world around us. We have a technology of showing invisible things like molecules or viruses. But in order to make them understandable to people, showing isn't enough. We need to explain what these things mean, how do these things work, and what they are. We believe the most efficient way of doing this is through interactive visual stories. We envision an environment where visual stories would be created by illustrators through querying a knowledge database. This environment would integrate the vast biology knowledge from which not only objects, but also processes and interactions could be illustrated completely procedurally. The role of the illustrator would become the one of a storyteller. Instead of tediously reproducing microscopy scans, they would be able to focus their artistic skills on crafting stories. While they would be free to choose appropriate visual properties supporting their story in the best possible way, the underlying representations of biological processes would be generated for them automatically. We have already made first steps towards this vision. All our procedural methods are real-time, giving the illustrators instant feedback on their queries. It also means that we can use these methods to create interactive stories, not only pre-recorded ones. 
This has huge potential to change the way we teach biology. Every question of a student can be immediately answered with a visual story. And every answer could be put into context of what the students already know. Another step we took to make all of this happen is a framework for authoring procedural animations. Animations of complex biological processes can take months to create. Our approach is to build mathematical models of processes and interactions, which can be then scripted. One example is our microtubule video. In our framework, we created a model of the way how molecules of protein called tubulin interact to form a skeleton of our cells. Then we created a visual story explaining this process on a molecular level, simply by changing parameters of the model over time. The whole production, including the music, voiceover, and all the graphics, took us one week. Here's a short segment of it. What if we try to show the nano world as realistically as possible? This is tubulin, a protein consisting of two tightly bound molecules, alpha tubulin and beta tubulin. Scattered throughout the cell, the tubulin molecules naturally form long chains called protofilaments. Protofilaments tend to bundle up into hollow tubular structures, microtubules. They are 24 nanometers in diameter and generally consist of 13 protofilaments. When assembling into a microtubule, both alpha and beta tubulin are bound to a molecule of guanosine triphosphate, or GTP. After some time, the GTP bound to the beta tubulin breaks down into guanosine diphosphate, or GDP, in a process called hydrolysis. The GDP tubulins, highlighted here in blue color, do not form such a stable lattice as the GTP tubulins do. When the hydrolysis catches up with the growing end of the microtubule, the growth stops and the whole structure becomes unstable. This event is called a catastrophe, and at this point, the microtubule starts to break down. Shortly afterwards, the disassembly stops in an event called a rescue, and the microtubule starts to grow again. Thank you all for listening. We now have a couple of minutes for Q&A.